Hey everybody, welcome to Friday Night Firestarter Bible Study, Baldwin Park, California. Doing a little something different today. Uh, I pray you had a blessed week. Um, of course, we have uh, Thanksgiving coming up here in the next couple of days. I pray that you just have a blessed time, whatever you're going to do, as far as with the family and uh, friends. Uh, but be safe out there. Um, Seems like uh, we're taking a turn for the worse, and uh, we just need to really be precautious and uh, just, you know, if, the best thing to do is to stay home. Uh, bottom line, to stay home. My wife and I, we're going to, that's what we're going to do. We're going to stay home. Amen. I just want to give a quick shout out to uh, Chalene and Trish. Uh, they came all the way from Fontana just to bring us some homemade chicken soup. Man, can't wait to tear into that amen so chills trish i love you we love you thank you for uh coming out and uh bringing some of that uh homemade chicken soup uh, on a cold night uh and netflix hey what more do you you know what more do you want amen uh yeah i'm flashing my new uh, la dodgers championship t-shirt i'm still celebrating and uh i wish i wish uh baseball wasn't over but uh, we look, got something to look forward to uh, next year. Amen. But I uh, just pray that you had a blessed week. And uh, your weekend will even be restful. And uh, whatever you have to do, if you have uh, things to go to or maybe you got a honeydew list to do. Amen. Uh, just be safe. Uh, we got some things going on here as far as our calendar goes. Uh, real quick, uh, of course... Uh, at our church tomorrow morning, we have a uh, prayer from 8 to 9 a.m. Amen. Come out and pray. Amen. Come out and intercede. Uh, maybe you have a unsaved loved one that, you know, you've been praying for. Come out and join uh, the rest of the group in prayer. Amen. Um, uh, so just uh, for one hour, from 8 to 9 o'clock, and then you could go to Denny's and have your uh, Grand Slam breakfast after that. Amen. Uh, on Sunday, on Sunday, uh, we have a guest, special guest speaker. He's in town now, and uh, all the way from Wichita, Kansas. Amen. Our very own Pastor Albert Paredes. Amen. Uh, powerful, powerful man of God doing great works out, out there in Wichita, Kansas, as far as his ministry goes. And uh, if you've never heard Albert uh, preach, oh man, uh, he's radical. Amen. He's very radical. Uh, love the brother. Amen. They've been out there pastoring in Wichita now for, oh wow, seven years at least, maybe six. Amen. But uh, they're just doing a great work. They bought. They have their own building. Uh, they're just uh, being fruitful out there, uh, spreading the gospel. And he's in town. So come out at 9.30. Service starts at 9.30, but come out at 9 o'clock. Uh, at 9 o'clock, we start our, you know, it's prayer from 9 to 9.30. Church, just, church doesn't start at 9.30. Church starts with prayer at 9 a.m. You come in, you pray, you, you get in the presence of the Lord. And then at 9.30, praise and worship starts. You invite the Holy Spirit through praise and worship. And then at 10 o'clock, the word is brought forth. So if you come in at 10 o'clock, you've missed everything. You, 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 you're just there for the word. You know, you get there at 9 o'clock, start praying. 9.30, start worshiping. And at 10 o'clock, you're ready. You're ready to get filled. Amen. Uh, uh, once again, our church, we started our men's and women's prayer group. So uh, women, women, any women out there tuned in. Amen. On the 23rd, Monday night, you have women's prayer at 7 p.m. It's going to be at the church, Praise Chapel, Baldwin Park. Uh, women, I encourage you, come out. Amen. And where a bunch of women just get together, amen, and just start interceding, start praying for one another, uh, for healing, for their people's children, marriages, finances, jobs, uh, whatever the case may be. 
uh, come out, women, and uh, start interceding. That's at 7 p.m. at our church, Praise Chapel, Baldwin Park. Amen. Of course, next Friday, there'll be no Bible study. It's uh, uh, Thanksgiving uh, weekend. Uh, and once again, if you're uh, fortunate enough to have those uh, Thursday and Friday off, and then the weekend, well, man, enjoy. Enjoy. Get some rest. Get some rest and enjoy, but be safe. Amen. Any men, any men tuned in out there? Any men? Uh, we have a special event. As of right now, it's still going to happen. We haven't heard anything. We know there's a lot of changes in the land right now. Uh, but as of right now, it's still going on. If there's any changes, of course, we'll let you know. But next uh, Saturday, not tomorrow, we come tomorrow on the 28th, we have the Men of Standard Men's Conference in Chino Valley. Amen. Uh, there's, uh, it's going to be uh, starting at 9 a.m., it's at the Chino Fairgrounds, right there off of Edison. And uh, uh, if you know where uh, Chino Prison's at, hey, you know, come on, somebody. Uh, it's right down the street from there, right across the street from uh, the park. Amen. So come out. Amen. There's going to be three powerful speakers. Of course, our own pastor, Pastor Raymond, is going to be speaking, Pastor Ruben Gutierrez, and then there'll be another speaker. Amen. So... It's the Inland, Inland Men's Empowerment, Praise Chapel Men's Event 2020, Men of Standard, amen? And I'm pretty sure they're going to be speaking on, you know, what does God, what does God expect for a man, for accountability, a man, standards, uh, faithfulness, steward, you know, to be a stu good, faithful steward. Uh, pretty sure all kind of different things are going to be taking place that day as far as the word coming forth. So the 28th, don't forget, man, the 28th, amen, of November, the Saturday after Thanksgiving, uh, Chino Fairgrounds at 9 a.m. Free lunch. Come on, somebody. You know, who, li who doesn't like a free lunch? Amen. Free lunch at right after this, right after last year. And the year before, they had an awesome barbecue barbecue uh, guy come out with that barbecue grill and, and all that smoking going on. Uh, so just uh, come out and be blessed, amen. Grab a, grab a sandwich or a burrito earlier just to get you through. And then come out, feed the spirit, and then afterwards, uh, a free, free lunch to feed the flesh, amen. So don't forget, November 28th. Amen. The Saturday after Thanksgiving. Man, don't stay home. Don't stay home. Come out. Come out. Amen. Uh, there's That place is big. There's plenty of room to social distance. Masks will be required. So just come out and be blessed. Amen. So men of standard, Saturday, November 28th, 9 a.m. If there's any changes, we'll let you know. Amen. And that's about it as far as the... Uh, announcements go amen uh as far as things going on i mean this month's already almost over i mean that's it uh we're gonna have thanksgiving after that the month's over then we get into december i mean uh as chaotic as chaotic and crazy as this year has been uh it went fast it went fast you know uh a lot of people didn't know if they were going to make it through the year. But by the grace of God, we're, we're here. Amen. We're here. We're, we're, we're healthy. We're alive. And, and we're still fighting the good fight of faith. I mean, that's the whole thing is, you know, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of people have uh, threw in the towel, unfortunately. Threw in the towel. They went back to doing things of the world. They, they just got, stopped coming to church. They... They don't, you know, they're not doing anything anymore as far as for the kingdom of God. And they just, uh, you know, found themselves in a place where they just got comfortable. And that's it, you know. But those of us that continue fighting the good fight of faith, we have something to be proud of. We have something to, to boast about. Not boast, I mean brag, but boast as far as in the Lord. That, hey, you know what? 
during all these months of uncertainty, all these months of, of chaos, all these months of, you know, we didn't know if we were going to have a job to go to or, or come on somebody, toilet paper or, or whatever the case may be, God provided, God provided. And it's just amazing. It's just amazing. I mean, uh, I mean, we didn't miss, you know, I'm not bragging. I, I have nothing to brag about. I'm nothing without God. My wife is nothing without God. And we just, we just skip a beat. Amen. We didn't skip a beat. Even when my wife got laid off for a couple months, we didn't skip a beat. God provided. Amen. And a lot of that has to do with being faithful in your tithing, being faithful in your offering, being faithful in any pledges that you give. Amen. And God honors that. We might not see it. We might not see it when we're planting that seed. But when things happen, God provides. Amen. And as long as we have fideo, as long as we have beans, and as long as we have rice and some eggs and, and tortillas, hey, I'm, myself, I'm happy. I'm happy. Amen. A piece, of, a piece of chicken now and then is just a treat. So I'm happy. Amen. That's how I was raised. and ain't nothing changed. So I give all glory to God. Amen. And, 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 and because of that, be faithful. Be faithful in your tithing. Be faithful in your offering. If, if, if you belong to Praise Chapel Baldwin Park, you, you know. I mean, we've been taught. We've been taught. We've been discipled. We've, we've had classes. And everything as far as tithing and offering, and there's no excuse. There's no excuse. If you don't give, it's because you don't want to give. Bottom line, if you don't, if you're, if you don't give, it's because you don't want to give. You're riding on someone else's blessings. That's what it is. And uh, if you belong to another church, but you're tuning in, uh, be faithful in your church. Be faithful to your pastor. Be faithful to your church. Amen. And continue giving. Uh, that's what that's what keeps the lights on. That's what keeps the heater on in the winter and the air conditioning on in the in the summer. Amen. Uh, the the pastors don't profit anything. Amen. It's we profit. We're the ones that profit because we have a church to go to. So many churches right now are closing the doors. I mean, it's amazing. I was reading the other, I was reading the other day. I think it was like a Tuesday or Wednesday, I was reading that, you know, uh, since this thing, this thing has happened and churches have, you know, can have, can have church and they don't have the facility to have it outside, they've done shut their doors. I mean, you pass by a church and it says for lease and uh, it's just sad, it's just sad. So just be faithful in that, amen, be faithful in that, be faithful in your giving because you're giving on to the Lord. You're not giving on to Mag. You're giving on to the Lord. And the Lord is going to honor that. Amen. And like I said, you might not see it right there and then. But in the time, it'll be there. Amen. So I just get all, give all glory to the Lord for that. Amen. Um, we have some prayer needs tonight. Amen. Uh, just want to continue praying for Pastor Dennis. United in him. Uh, uh, fellowship out in St. Demas, dear friend of my wife and I, his uh, wife, uh, Pastor Denise Ponce, amen. He had surgery, uh, he had surgery a couple of days ago to remove a, a tumor that he had, amen. Uh, surgery went well, he's recovering, amen, he's recovering, it's something that's, uh, you know, he's not going to be able to do uh, burpees right away, but, uh, Glory to God, amen. Glory to God. We just gonna have it in God's hands for his healing and, and, and uh, restoration as far as his body. Amen. And uh we're look I'm looking forward to uh seeing him soon and very soon, amen. Because of you know the the COVID thing, you know, it's not like I could we could just go over there and knock on his door, amen. But God will God will make a way for us to see him at the right time, amen. But just know, Pastor Dennis, we love you. Jackie and I or always praying for you every morning. Just know that every morning at 7.15, we're praying for you. At 7.15 in the morning, we're praying for you. Amen. You, your ministry, your leadership. Uh, we're praying for your home, your children, your grandchildren. Just know we love you. And I never forget the day that we met. Amen. At a yard sale in Covina. Amen. 
It was just, you've always, since then, you've been a blessing to me. Amen. And uh, so continue lifting him up with us. Amen. Intercede with us in that. Also, uh, Brother George. Brother George. Amen. Uh, we, he needs prayer. He needs a healing in his body. Amen. Sister Raylene, we love you, mija. Just know, we're always, I mean, there's not a day that don't go by that we're praying for you, mija. We love you. We look forward to the day that we could be once again united. Amen. Uh, also, amen. Uh, just want to lift up our pastors, Pastor Raymond and Sister Gloria. Amen. And uh, the, the ministry that, that that God has blessed them with. Amen. And and uh, just come in agreement there with uh, for them. Amen. They're dear, they're dear to our hearts, our own pastors. Amen. And if there's anybody out there that has a need, amen, anybody out there that needs prayer, amen, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed to reach out to a brother or a sister, amen, uh, to pray. If you're, if, you're a, if you're a sister in the Lord, reach out to a sister. You got no business reaching out to a brother. Let's get that straight right now. Reach out to a sister, and if you're a brother, reach out to another brother. Don't be reaching out to a sister. Come on. You know what I'm talking about. Reach out to a brother. Amen. Also, I want to lift up uh, my spiritual dad, Chaplain Bobby Mercado. Amen. Uh, Bobby, if you're listening, we're praying for you for healing. Amen. Uh, Pastor Sede, we're praying for healing. Uh, amen. Uh, they know. They they know. Amen. So uh, we just pray for them. Uh, Mama Pat, we're praying for you too. Your Mercado Ministries. So uh, we lift that up. We lift that up to you. Amen. So before we get into the word of God tonight, amen. Uh, I just want to just open up in prayer and just uh, invite the Holy Spirit tonight. I believe that that not just myself or my wife, uh, our home, uh, but I, I, I really believe that, you know, we really have to really look look unto the Holy Spirit tonight. Amen. Uh, my kids, my children, my grandchildren, you know, they all have needs right now. Uh, so I just want to invite the Holy Spirit uh, just to just take over. Amen. Just to take over. Amen. Gracious Father, we come before you tonight, Father God. and We invite, Father God, the Holy Spirit, Father God. But first, Father God, I just come to the altar of repentance. Forgive me of my trespasses. We forgive those that trespass against us, Father God. Search my heart, Father God. If there's anything I've done that has offended you or grieved the Spirit, I repent right now, Father God. So nothing will hinder my, my prayer, Lord God. We invite the Holy Spirit tonight. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your dominion over what was going to be spoken tonight. Over our homes, over we plead the blood of Jesus over our minds, over our bodies. We plead the blood of Jesus over my children and our grandchildren right now. We plead the blood of Jesus over their homes and anybody out there that's tuning in. We just plead the blood of Jesus because it's about the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. So Holy Spirit, have your way tonight. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, tonight, if you have your Bibles, which you should, it's Friday night Bible study, amen. I'm old school. I still use the Bible, amen. Uh, yeah, I do have a, a Bible app on my phone. That's in case I, you know, someone asks me a question and I need to look it up real fast and I don't have my Bible with me right, right there and then. But uh, I still, there's just something about the book, amen. A lot of people, a lot of people got their face too much in Facebook when they should have their face in the book, this book, amen. So if you have your Bibles tonight, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, amen, Check in, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and we're going to be, we're, we're going to kind of break this chapter down, amen, but we're, we're only going to go as far as verse 30, amen. There's, you know, there's uh, 37, there's 37 verses in chapter 20, but because of time, we're only going to go to chapter 30, but I really need for you to just pay attention, 
I really need for you to just follow me in this because we're going to see exactly what we're going through right now and what we should be doing as born again believers. Amen. And once we understand that and we get that in our head, uh, I believe that I believe that our walk each day will, will be easier. But we have to follow certain principles. Amen. Uh, Brother Jesse Romero, Romero on Wednesday night gave a powerful message, message as far as the anointing of the, of the vision. Amen. It's like uh, when, when we first, when, in January, when, in January, you know, our, our, uh, our theme to our conference was Vision 2020. Amen. Without vision, the people perish. Amen. And that was our theme. Amen. And we all had a vision. We all had a vision in January. Just like people have New, Re New Year's resolutions. Amen. Most by, they, have, they make them on January 1st. By the January 15th, you know, those res they already blew the resolution. Amen. But in our church, we had a vision. And, you know, whatever our vision was, whether it was to pray more, to fast more, to give more, to, to be a better steward, to uh, be more faithful, to uh, whatever the case may be was our vision, amen, a, a ministry. Uh, maybe the Lord put it in someone's heart, in my heart, someone's heart, to start a certain ministry. Um, and then March came. And then, uh, you know, it totally just flipped everything around in March. But just because... From March to right now, we're in the situation we are. The vision didn't disappear. The vision's still there. Amen. The problem is, is that we as people lost our vi we lost the vision. The vision's still there spiritually. The vision's still there, but we in the flesh just put the vision behind us. Amen. We no longer have that desire for the vision. We're still going to church. We're still serving the Lord. We're still doing the things that we know we're supposed to do. But as far as the vision God put in your heart to do in January, it no longer exists. Amen. Uh, we here here in my home, um, I started a, a men's breakfast, and uh, we had the first one two months ago. And then we had the second one just this past Saturday. Powerful. It was powerful. Uh, Pastor uh, Jose Pepe Montenegro from Calvary Chapel in Northeast LA came and spoke. We had uh, about 30 men here, uh, and it was just powerful, amen, a, a men's breakfast. And uh, it's just good to have men together, just a fellowship from different fellowships. We had, you know, Victory Outreach, Praise Chapel, we had Calvary Chapel. We had men, you know, that didn't even go to church, but they came. And it was just powerful, amen. And he gave an awesome word. And uh, that's the vision. That's the vision. The vision doesn't, doesn't stop because the, the, the world is on hold. No, the vision keeps going. And, that, and that's what uh, we're going to kind of get, get here this tonight, amen. And I just want to go a couple key points. When we read, when we do this, we're gonna do a little bit of reading. Amen. Nothing's wrong with that. Amen. All of us know how to read. Amen. But we need to understand what the Word of God is gonna tell us, and the only way to do it is by reading it and breaking it down. Amen. Let me get some of this holy water. Second Chronicles chapter twenty, verse one. Amen. And then I'm going to kind of go back and then uh, kind of give you a, a, what happened before then, which led to this place. Amen. It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them, besides the Ammonites, came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea of Syria, and they are in Hazan Tamar, which is 
in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared, someone say feared, and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord and from all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. I'm going to stop right there. Okay, Jehoshaphat is King Jehoshaphat. He's the king of Judah, and which he dwelt, he lived in Jerusalem. Amen. But here in chapter 20, we see that Jehoshaphat feared. Why did he fear? First of all, he feared because he found out someone came and told him that an army was coming to invade their camp. Now, it just wasn't one army. It just wasn't one army. Look what it says right here in verse 1. It happened after this that the people of Moab, 1, and the people of Ammon, 2, and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. So there is at least three separate tribes coming to attack King Jehoshaphat and the people of Jerusalem, of Judah. Amen. Depending on what commentary you read, amen, Jehoshaph the, Jehoshaphat's army, the army of Jerusalem, was about 1,160,000. Amen. That's a lot of people. That's a pretty big army. You would think they have enough people to take on whoever they're going to take on. But you need to understand, yeah, that even though they had a great number in their army, it still wasn't enough to go to battle with the, the ones that were coming against them. It's like this. Uh, say for whatever your favorite, whatever your, your football team is, right? I, I follow the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, I know. They're, they, they, they're having a bad season. They're, you know, they're, they're kind of done for the year. Amen. But they're still my team. So just picture Carolina Panthers. Amen. On this side of the field. And they're looking at their rivals across the other field. But they're looking at Tampa Bay. They're looking at the Saints. And they're looking at Arizona Cardinals. They're looking at three teams and Carolina Panthers are going to go against those three teams well you know right off that the Panthers ain't going to win they're going to get destroyed amen I mean it just they're outnumbered so that's how it was here that's why the Bible says that Jehoshaphat feared amen he feared because he knew he was outnumbered he knew that no matter if he had a million one hundred and sixty thousand people in his army, there was going to be no match. Amen. But look what Jehoshaphat did, and that's what we. This is what we need to understand right off the bat. Amen. We understand what's going on right now in the land in our nation. Amen. Things are going backwards now. People are panicking. I mean, people are once again. I mean, they didn't. If they didn't learn from the first time. Amen. And I'm pretty sure it's the same people that that were doing it at the beginning are doing it again now. I mean, they're you know, they're buying up all the toilet paper, all the paper towels, they're buying, you know, buying up all those things, amen. The supermarkets got smart this time, amen, and only allowing one one uh, pack per person, but uh at least they learned their lesson. But uh, there's fear in the land. There's fear in the land. There's fear, once again, of people losing their jobs. Of There's, uh, there's fear that there's going to be a shutdown, a lockdown. There's fear of, uh, you know, the, the numbers as far as COVID are rising. Uh, there's fear in the land. But in verse 3, in verse 3, we're going to see what Jehoshaphat did. Amen. And this is what we need to do, that we need to do. In verse 3, the Bible says, And Jehoshaphat feared. And look what he did. And set himself to seek the Lord. That's the first thing he did. 
He didn't run to, he didn't run to mama, he didn't run to daddy, he didn't go hide in a cave, he didn't panic, he didn't, you know, he didn't start complaining or murmuring and, uh, no. What did he do? He set himself to seek the Lord. And that's what we need to do, beloved, during these times. That's what we need to do it even if we weren't going through these times. We need to seek the Lord. Amen? The second thing he did was he proclaimed a fast throughout Judah. Amen? So the first thing he did was that he set himself to seek the Lord. And the second thing he did was that he proclaimed a fast. Amen? And then the Bible tells us that, So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Amen. So not only did Jehoshaphat, amen, set himself to seek the Lord, but all of Judah, amen, came to also seek the Lord. Amen. So as men, as priests of our homes, amen, we are to seek the Lord. And when we seek the Lord, our wife will seek the Lord. Our children will seek the Lord. Amen. If you're, a, if you're a sister in the Lord with no husband, besides God is your husband, you seek the Lord. And those in your household will seek the Lord. Amen. If you panic, they're going to panic. If you complain, they're going to complain. If you freak out, they're going to freak out. If you seek the Lord, they're going to seek the Lord. Come on, somebody. Amen. Verse 5. Verse 5. You need to get this. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. Come on. So, what did Jehoshaphat do? He set himself to seek the Lord. He proclaimed a fast. All the others in Judah came to seek the Lord. And then what did Jehoshaphat do? His Bible says it right here that he stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord. He went to church. He didn't go to the bar. He didn't go to the connection. He didn't go to the unemployment office. He didn't go here. He didn't go there. He went to where? He went to the house of the Lord. He went to church. <clears throat> he went to church. Hello, somebody. Where are you at? How come you're not in church? Amen? You haven't been in church in, in, in eight months now. Amen? Don't sit there and tell me you're seeking the Lord from home. Don't sit there and tell me you're, 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 you're proclaiming a fast from home. Come on. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of the Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. Before the new court. And said, O oh Lord, God of our fathers, are you not? Someone say, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? Okay, from verse 6, from verse 6 down to verse 13, what did Jehoshaphat do when he was in church? What did he do when he was in church? He prayed. This is known as the prayer of Jehoshaphat. Amen. This is known as the prayer of Jehoshaphat. From verse 6 to verse 13. Amen. And look, at, look what his prayer is. Look what his prayer is. And this is how we need to pray during these times. In verse 6. And said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of the land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name saying? If disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, 
pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple. Come on, somebody. If disaster comes upon us, amen, coronavirus, COVID, judgment, pestilence, famine, unemployment, amen, divorce, whatever the case may be, we will stand before this temple. We're not going to leave church. And in your presence, for your name is in this temple, and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save us. And now here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Sir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. But they turned from them and did not destroy them. Here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against the great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Now all Judah with their little ones, their wives and their children stood before the Lord. Amen. The prayer of Jehoshaphat is the prayer of our lives. Bottom line. Amen. Bottom line. Here, if, here in verse 10, amen, Jehoshaphat told the Lord, look it, Lord, the same people, the same people when we came out of Egypt, the same people that we wanted to destroy at that time, we did it. We, 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 we didn't lay a hand on them because you told us not to. These same people are now rewarding us by coming to take, to kill us. Amen. That's why he says here in verse 11, Here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out of our possession, which you have given us to inherit. So hey, you know, Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat was just, you know, putting his heart on the line there in his prayer. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Jehoshaphat is being honest with himself. He's being honest with God saying, Lord, we have no power over these people. We cannot defeat these people. <clears throat> and that's how it is in our lives. There are certain situations that are out of our control. Amen. We can't fix it. Amen. We, it's, it's, you know, in the spiritual realm, it overpowers us. Amen. And we have to be honest with God. God, I can't deal with this no more. God, uh, you know, I try to talk to my children. I've tried to talk to my, my, my family. I've tried. I just can't do it. I just can't take it no more. Amen. And that's how we need to be honest with God. We need to come to God and say, God, I cannot do it. it, it I just, it, it's overpowering me. But watch what he says. Watch what he says. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do. Sometimes you don't know what to do in your circumstances. So you don't know what to do in this, in, in this area of your life or that area in your life. You just don't know what to do. Amen. It's like writing a check with no money in the bank. Amen. You know it's going to bounce. If you try to fix it yourself, it's just going to backfire on you. So look what he says. But, but, someone say but, but our eyes are upon you. That's what Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah came to realize. Hey, you know what? We cannot defeat these people. Amen. Uh, we have no answers. We just can't. We, we can't. Our, our backs are against the wall. Amen. But no matter what. No matter what, Lord, our eyes are upon you. Amen. But how do you know? You know that God is never late. God is always on time. Amen. And that's why in verse 14, he tells us, Then the Spirit of the Lord, come on, Holy Spirit. Someone needs to thank the Holy Spirit tonight. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jahazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benai, the son of Jael, and the son of Mataniah, a Levite. Well, who, what's a Levite? A priest. 
of the sons of Asaph in the midst of the assembly among the people. Where were the people at? In church. Amen. Remember, the people were in church. Jehoshaphat made, did this prayer in church. Amen. And the spirit came, the spirit came upon Jehazel. Where? In church. Amen. Not at Walmart. Not at Food for Less. Amen. Not at Best Buy. No. The, it came upon him in church. You see what you're missing, people, when you're not in church? <clears throat> in the midst of the assembly. And he said, listen, all of you Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Your battle is not yours tonight, beloved. It's not. It's not. And stop trying to make it your battle. If you give it to God, the battle belongs to the Lord. And nowhere in the Bible, nowhere in the Bible does it say that God has ever lost the fight. Nowhere. From Genesis to Revelations, the beginning to the end. Nowhere does it say that God lost the fight. Nowhere. Amen. The battle is not ours. The battle is not yours. The battle is not mine. The battle is not my wife's, but God's. Amen. You're dealing something with tonight. You're going through something physically, illness in your body. Amen. The battle is not yours. It's God's. Give it to God. Amen. Take Jehoshaphat's prayer. Look what Jehoshaphat said. Remember what Jehoshaphat said. Are you not? And that's what we need to cry out to God in our prayers. Are you not God, the God that healeth, healeth thee? Are you not the God that delivers thee? Amen. Are you not the God that saves? Aren't you not the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end? Amen. Are you not the God that made us the head and not the tail? Come on, people. Verse 16. Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the accent of Ziggs, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Joel. You will not need to fight in this battle. You will not need to fight in this battle. If the battle belongs to the Lord, you will not need to fight in this battle because God's going to take care of it. Amen? Position yourselves and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. Position yourself. How do you position yourself? On your knees. <clears throat> On your knees. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Verse 20. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets, and you shall prosper. Amen. Look at, look what they did in verse 20. So they rose early in the morning. Amen. You need to get up and seek the Lord early in the morning, beloved. Amen. You can't be searching him at when you get up at 11 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock in noontime. You can't. That's why we have prayer at 8 a.m. You need to get up early in the morning. Look what they did in verse 20. So they rose up early in the morning and went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. You know what Tekoa means? The Tekoa in the Hebrew means trumpet. Amen. They rose up early in the morning. Amen. And went to the wilderness of the trumpet. What does a trumpet do? It makes a noise. What is it? Well, how does it make a noise? You blow it to the trumpet. Amen. And that's what you need to do. You need to rise up early in the morning and go to the wilderness of Tekoa, the wilderness of the trumpet. You sound the trumpet. What does a trumpet represent in the Bible? The trumpet represents victory. Victory. Amen. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, 
Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Look what it says. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets, and you shall prosper. Verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who sh should sing to the Lord, and who should praise the beauty of his holiness, as they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercies endures forever. Verse 22. Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Sir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. For the people of Ammon, Moab, stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Sir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when... They had made an end to the inhabitants of Sir. They helped to destroy one another. Look what God did. Look at, look at, look at. Look in verse 18 through 21. Remember, the battle does not belong to us. The battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. God told them to, the prophet told them to position yourselves. Amen. Position yourselves. And stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. So what did they do? What did they do? They praised and worshipped the Lord. Look what it says. And verse 21. And when he had consulted with his people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord. And who should praise the beauty of his holiness. As they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy and dearth forever. You're going through something tonight. Start praising the Lord. Start start. Singing to the Lord. Put on praise and worship. Amen. Turn off Power 106. Turn off KRLA. Turn off whatever that trash you're listening to. And start praising the Lord. Amen. Because he's going to give you your victory. Amen. The problem is too many people want to praise the Lord after the victory. Well, we should be praising the Lord before the victory. Oh, I like that one. I think I'll buy my own tape. Come on, somebody. For the people of Ammon, in verse 23, and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Sir to utterly destroy one another. You know what happened? God, God supernaturally, amen, made those three armies that were coming against Judah and the people of Jerusalem to fight against one another. Amen. What they thought was shouting, what they thought was people shouting of fear, was literally praise and worship. And what happened was, they fought against each, each other, and they destroyed each other. The people of Jerusalem and Judah didn't have to lift up one sword. They did it. Amen. Verse 24. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and there there were dead bodies falling on the earth. No one had escaped. Amen. Verse 25. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them the abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. Come on, somebody. Not only will God give you the victory, God will prosper you. You trust in the Lord and believe in the Lord. Not only will he fight your battle for you. He will prosper you. Verse 26. And on the fourth day they assembled in the valley of Bar Barakah. For there they blessed the Lord. Therefore the name they named of the place was called the valley of Barakah to this day. Barakah. You know what the Baraka means in the Hebrew? Baraka means blessings. Blessings. So if you want to put a title to my message tonight, the title to my message is The Valley of Blessings and Praise. The, the Valley of Blessings and Praise. See, God, God will take you. God will take you from your fear... If you trust the Lord, if you trust the Lord, God will take you from that fear to make you, and you do exactly what we're commanded to do. God will take us from that fear, 
God would deal with our enemies. God would deal, well, the battle will be, belong to the Lord. God will destroy our enemy. God will prosper us. And then he'll take us to the valley of blessings. Come on. I want to be blessed. How many of you want to be blessed out there? Amen. Then they returned, verse 27, Then they returned to every man of Judah and Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat in the front of them to go back to Jerusalem with joy of the Lord had made them rejoice over their enemies. Verse 28, So they came to Jerusalem with stringed instruments. They're still praising the Lord. They're still playing and harps and trumpets to the house of the Lord. They went back to church. Beloved, they went back to church. They started in church. They went to the valley and they went back to church. Man, this is some good stuff, amen? And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of the, those countries when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. Pay attention to verse 30. Then the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his, for his God gave him rest all around. There's just something about when you praise and worship the Lord, beloved. It just, it just supernaturally just brings everything into perspective. Amen. I love praise and worship. Amen. I do. Amen. Psalms 22 verse 3 tells us, God inhabits the praises of his people. God loves it, beloved. God loves it when we are praising him in song. Amen. Psalms 100, 1 and 2 tells us, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Amen. It's just so awesome, amen. It's just so awesome, amen. If you get a chance, just read 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Amen. You could go. You could read the rest of it, verses thirty-one to thirty-seven. Amen. But the the whole meat of it was what we shared tonight. Amen. Verses one to thirty. Verse twenty-nine. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they heard that what the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. See, when people find out. When people find out and they hear, you know, God's miracle, what God has done in your life and God's miracles, amen, they'll, 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 they won't understand it. They won't comprehend, amen. Some will even fear, amen. But they'll be in awe. It'll be a fear of awe, amen. And in verse 30, then the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest all around. So one, Jehoshaphat seek the Lord. Two, he proclaimed a fast. Three, all the all the all the rest of the people and his seek the Lord. Four, he went to church. Five, he blew the trumpet. Six. He went to the valley of ble he got he became the valley of blessings. Seven, he went back to church, and after all that, God gave him rest. God gave him peace all around. You want peace tonight, beloved? You going through something? Read the prayer of Jehoshaphat. Amen. Make it part of your life every day. And see, watch the wonders of the Lord. Amen. Because the battle does not belong to us. It belongs to you. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. I pray that Second Chronicles chapter 20 was a blessing to you tonight. Amen. I know it was to me. I mean, I just, I couldn't get every, every day I was reading it and getting my, my notes together, amen, and it was just uh, something different, something, di every time I read it, I was getting something different, and I just want to thank the Holy Spirit for ministering to my heart this week with that chapter, uh, Second Chronicles chapter 20, 
Amen. And maybe you are going through something tonight. And you say, man, Brother Dario, it's just, it's just hard. It's just hard to just, you know, give it to the Lord. It is. Sometimes it is. Because our pride, our pride wants us to do it ourselves. Uh, we've been brought up to take care of our own business. Amen. And But we need to realize that sometimes we just get so overwhelmed, especially with everything going on as far as in our nation or here locally. Amen. I mean, uh, starting tonight, there's a curfew from 10 o'clock to 6 in the morning all the way to, I think, before Christmas. Uh, there's a curfew down. Uh, so no more running to a Taco Bell at 11 o'clock at night. Amen. With the munchies. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, 10 o'clock to 6 in the morning. Amen. There's a curfew. And uh, so uh, it just... One thing after another. But we need to know the battle does not belong to us. It belongs to the Lord. And we just need to trust in the Lord. Amen. So maybe you're out there tonight and you need prayer. Maybe you're out there tonight and you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You're a backslider. And you know that you know that you know. It's the conviction of the Holy Spirit in your heart that you need to get right with the Lord. Amen. I just want to lead you in a quick prayer. Amen. I just want to lift up your needs. Amen. And, uh, you know, I'm just, a, I'm just a, a brother in Christ, just like you. Amen. I have faults. I mess up. Amen. But I know I serve a God of forgiveness, a God of restoration, a God of grace, a God of love, and a God of mercy. Amen. And without Him, I, I probably would have been dead years ago have not locked up for life amen i just celebrated my 60th birthday yeah 60 my 60th birthday i just celebrated amen and i was reflecting on a lot of things of my past amen and things i wish i could have did different uh but you know those are just things we think of amen the bottom line is where i'm at now where i'm at now I'm sitting at my dining room table, amen, in my beautiful home, beautiful wife with my kids, my grandchildren, amen. Uh, I can go to the refrigerator and get me a glass of milk and make me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich if I want, amen. I'm not locked up somewhere, amen, and I'm not six feet under, amen. So I give all thanks and glory to the Lord for that, amen. So let's pray, amen, let's pray. And uh, we just see the salvation of the Lord work in your life. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just come before you tonight, Father God. And we just pray, Father God, that your word went out and did not come back void, Father God. I pray, Father God, as we just uh, studied the prayer of Jehoshaphat, Father God, and that, Father God, that you will take our fear and turn it into blessings, Lord God. But there's a process. Just like Jehoshaphat, he had a process he had to go through to get to that valley of blessings. And that's what we need to do. Amen. We got to go through the process. We got to go through the battles. We got to go through our dark valley to get to that blessing. Amen. Let us be mighty warriors of the kingdom where we can blow our trumpet daily, Father God. And Father God, right now, if there's anybody out there at the sound of my voice that... Never accepted the Lord as your Lord and Savior. Or maybe you're a backslider and you know you need to get right with the Lord. Well, I'm going to pray with you. I can't save you. I'm just a vessel, a, a vessel of mercy. But God can save you. Amen. And God will be there for you. Even when you mess up, He's there for you. So just repeat these words after me. Amen. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you a sinner. You know everything about me. You know when I wake up and when I lay down. You know the things that I say before I even say it. You know the things that I look at before I even look at. And you know the things that I hear before I even hear it. Forgive me of my sins as I repent to you, Lord God. Take all those things that are not pleasing to you and cast them as far as the east is from the west. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are Jesus and that you are now at the right hand of the Father. 
and that you died on the cross and rose on the third day for me. And from this day forward, I will serve you to the best of my ability. I will read your word. I will get into a Bible study. I will get into a church. And Father God, I know I've served you in the past, but I fell away. I fell short. But I'm ready to come back. Forgive me. Forgive me for hurting you. And take me, Lord God, once again, and restore me. Make me the man, make me the woman of God that you once had me before I went astray. And I will do my best to stay with the sheepfold. In Jesus' name, amen. If you truly said that, and you truly repented, and you believe, and everything came from sincerity from the heart, God heard it. God's going to honor it. And just do me a favor. Get it. If you're not part of a church, find a good Bible teaching, non-compromising church. Amen. And if you're part of Praise Chapel, you were part of Praise Chapel at one time, and whatever the case may be, you left, come back. Come back home. Come back to your first love. Amen. That's all you got to do. Just come back. Amen. We're still there. A lot of people are still there. We all still struggle. We still go through things, but we're still there. Come back and fight the good fight with us. And if you're in the area of Baldwin Park, come and visit us. Amen. Sunday morning, Praise Chapel Baldwin Park. Amen. Uh, Nine o'clock. And uh, come and uh, uh, get a taste of Wichita, Kansas. Pastor Albert. Amen. So until then, amen. If no one else loves you, just know Jesus loves you. Good night and God bless you. Amen.